I have seen Season 1, Episode 14 of Star Trek Prodigy entitled Crossroads, and now it's time to talk about it. Last chance to avoid spoilers, and on we go. Do you like action, adventure, returning characters, and plot convenient misunderstanding? Well, then you've come to the right place. If you've been watching my Star Trek Prodigy reviews, then you may be coming to realize just how much this show seems to be hitting the right notes for me. It isn't perfect, and I still maintain that the slightly modified nature of forming it into a children's program has impacted the overall end product, but it still feels leaps and bounds ahead of most contemporary Star Trek shows, at least in the feel of Trek, even when it doesn't always completely live up to the story structure of those older shows. This episode picks up at the beginning of a new mission, and I kind of like that approach. We didn't have five minutes of dialogue and planning, we just kind of kick things into gear as everyone is going into motion. Well... Quick digression, the actual episode kicked off with a diviner healing on the Dauntless and continuing to share what he could remember with the original recipe Janeway and crew. He recalls the name of his daughter, which just so happens to come into play later on. But as I mentioned, the A plot with our prodigy pals starts off with a plan going into action and a brief captain's log from Dell explaining the dealio. Ew. That did not feel good to say whatsoever. Computer, strike that from the record. And boy, let me say, while this isn't the first time we've had a captain's log in modern Star Trek of late, Strange New Worlds brought those back in folk, there's such a fantastic storytelling tool and something that I've really missed in Star Trek. To have it reappear here and to put that unconventional Dale spin on it, it's something I truly enjoyed and I feel like they should do more of this in Star Trek shows. And such an element that sets it apart and kind of sets up its own universe, I really do miss that. Our crew has decided that since they are incapable of going to Starfleet with a whole living weapon situation still inside their ship, they must stow the ship itself somewhere away, somewhere safe, somewhere where Starfleet will not stumble upon it and accidentally activate their doom. And they'll have to travel to Starfleet with some other means. They bury the ship in the snow of the Denoxi Depot, and I cannot be sure, but this felt an Awful lot like that planet from the Voyager episode Timeless, you know, the one where Harry Kim and Chakotay were the only remaining survivors of Voyager upon a failed attempted return to the Federation via an experimental quantum slipstream drive. In that alternate future, the ship crashed onto an ice world just outside of the Alpha Quadrant, and eventually Chakotay and Kim tracked it down and found it frozen under the ice. We also have use of a quantum slipstream drive later in this episode, so perhaps it's just me putting too much Voyager into this pseudo-Voyager sequel, or maybe the whole shebang was intentional. I don't know if that's the case, but it very, very much felt like they were heavily implying this may be somewhat related to that planet. Obviously, the timeline has been reset, so there is no timeless situation going on, but that would be a fun callback to Voyager nerds like me. Our crew encounters a bunch of really cool characters in this place. Outrageously enough, they run into Okana first, that devilish rogue from way back in TNG Season 2. And then, of course, he was already referenced in Lower Decks as well. Now, he offers them the travel that they seek, but unfortunately, he's apprehended by some Zindi reptilians for smuggling. Hell to the air, more Enterprise love, I'm very much enjoying this. Heck, that was one of the things I very much loved about Star Trek Beyond is the whole Enterprise love they were showing it. And it's kind of clever and kind of funny to me, maybe not clever because I don't think it was actually intended, but how Enterprise, with all of these different potential universes and different shows, Enterprise is still at the core a prequel to every single one, because that is always prior to the point of divergence and timelines. Even though Star Trek Enterprise didn't get the love it deserved back in the day, it's actually baked into the recipe for all of the Star Trek shows before and since, and it is always existing within their past. And that, to me, is a huge win. There's also a smattering of other cool species and races, a Klingon who looks, at least to me, like the motion picture design, so not that much different from the TNG forward design, but just a little bit off. They also had a Kazon, not to mention more that we've already seen on this show prior. Now, as the crew splits up to try and find a new ride, they mostly all end up having run-ins with various crew members of the Dauntless. While I very much enjoyed these interactions, this did involve one of my least favorite tropes in fiction, the whole tension and barely missed connections due to plot-convenient misunderstandings. It isn't a huge down for me, but it just never feels natural. 
If it happened with one encounter, I guess I could let it slide a little bit more, but as all of our characters met up with various members of Starfleet, and none of them were able to get to the point of resolution, I know that this was just more of a, uh, a story beat. It's a kind of a thing that's just a tired story arc to me. It was something that they needed to happen for the story, even if it isn't a more realistic or organic type of thing. Speaking of organic, Organic Janeway and company are under the impression that the people on the Protostar are the ones who either kidnapped or possibly killed Chakotay and ruthlessly destroyed that Federation outpost staffed by our odd Denobulan fellow a couple episodes prior. Due to this and the fact that Gwyn, who is now known by name thanks to the memory recovered by the Diviner at the beginning of this episode, is trying to escape from a father she only recently discovered is not dead, and by recently I mean smack dab right in the middle of this episode. The Protostar kids run off into the snow to escape from Starfleet because of all of this misunderstanding. I would also like to take a moment here to stress to you all just how much I loved the winterized Starfleet dress uniforms in this episode with the built-in hood and all of that. I really dig them and I understand that they're just throwing every single possible different variation of uniforms at the wall to see what sticks. Almost every episode has a new uniform, but I'm okay with that. I'm not going to collect them all, but I am going to enjoy my favorites, so that is one that I can get behind. Now, we also have a pretty high-speed chase to engage in here. They hop on some sort of a sand speeder-looking thing and go shooting off across the snow. The chase is fine. Nothing I would really write home about. It wasn't very breathtaking, but I find myself at this point rarely impressed with chases anymore. If I ever was to begin with. That might just be a personal issue, but chases just kind of seem like something they need to put in movies and shows that I'm not typically just glued to. While being chased, they open a compartment to find more items in order to throw at the chasing, pursuing vehicles. When who should appear? Well, it's just Okana once again. And I know that we got word that he was coming to join the cast of the show, and I very much welcome that. But to be honest, I had completely forgotten that point until now, and I'm kind of glad I did, because I really miss the old days when we were able to go into things without knowing every damn little nuance of who was going to appear when and what the show and movie was actually going to be about. I miss the days where there was, you know, a trailer maybe, and then you'd go into the movie and know absolutely nothing about it. You could be spoiled. You could have surprises, not like the flood of information we have on the internet these days. And when you do get a surprise snuck past you, those things mean a little bit more, I think. So our crew gets back to the buried protostar first, a couple of fun exchanges happen here. There's a little bit of humor. We get to see Hollow Janeway back online. It's nice to see Okana kind of dealing with the situation. All that was great. The ship takes to the stars, and we're off the Hoth planet. I mean, uh, wrong franchise, the Ice planet. Now, the Dauntless is chasing the Protostar in a quantum slipstream tunnel. Murph, by the way, was still dealing with the whole cocoon situation this episode. It really didn't have much to do with the plot until now, because it finally hatches into some sort of weird rainbow Pikmin thing. Not really sure I like this look yet, although we really haven't had much time with it, but I really did like that slime worm look. It was kind of a unique thing that we don't often get to see, so I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. Anywho, he jumps onto the console and accidentally fires a torpedo at the Dauntless who's pursuing them, Janeway, organic Janeway that is, is less than pleased and decides to return fire taking out the third nacelle of the Protostar right before they were going to jump into their super amazing ultra plaid speed. It just so happens that they are knocked out of warp right outside the Romulan neutral zone and through some fancy stuff by Okana they're able to modify their shield frequencies or whatever the hell it is to hide as Romulan ships in order to cross into enemy territory. Now, Organic Janeway is all set to try and follow them before her first officer, that cool Andorian dude who, by the way, better watch his freaking back. They better not completely waste him like Hemmer. Still bitter. Still freaking bitter. But yeah, before he basically tells her that she's not acting in an intelligent manner, so he won't be following her orders, and then they are hailed by the Ramis and cliffhanger ending. Although I mentioned that this episode employed a couple of tropes that I really find less than amazing, I still really enjoyed it. It's great that they seem to be moving the plot along more and more quickly than I thought they would. They're bringing people together now and adding new characters. Not really a fan of the new look for Murph yet, but I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. 
One big thing this episode brought rushing right back to me is how amazing it is to have true Romulans again. While I do like Star Trek 2009, I never really liked the idea of destroying Romulus. In my estimation, we barely scratched the surface on their story in the first place, and I really wish that had been one thing they undid when they brought this universe back. But it seems like they just want to double down on the whole destruction of Romulus. I don't know, I'm just not enjoying that storyline at all, and I really wish we had more stories with the actual Romulan Empire, because I feel like that was always kind of a side thing that never really got to walk the stage in their own grand story. But I digress. Since all of this is in a simulation anyways, I suppose it really doesn't matter after all. Anyways, I can't wait to see what happens next, but what are your thoughts on Prodigy at this point? Loving it? Not watching it? Just meh? Whatever. Leave all those below with a like and subscribe, and until next time, well, you know what to do. Computer, end program.